Welcome to the Genealogy Gems Podcast, providing quick and innovative ways to make the absolute most out of your research time and creative ideas for sharing and displaying your family history. I'm your host, Lisa Louise Cook. Welcome to episode 26 of the Genealogy Gems Podcast. This is going to be a fairly quick episode because I'm getting ready and packing up for the Northern Utah Genealogy Jamboree in Ogden this Saturday, September 15th. And I'm really excited to have a booth, and I'm hoping that you're going to have an opportunity to attend and come by and introduce yourself. To learn more about the conference, you can listen to episode 25. Well, remember episode 16 and the genealogy play day that we had? Well, I'm in that mood again, maybe because the kids are heading back to school and I can get a little more research time before the holidays arrive. Well, this week I outdid myself in silliness, and I'm going to tell you how you can see it for yourself, but more about that in just a moment. First, here's a quick gem for you. You know, when I set up my iGoogle homepage that we discussed in episode 15, I was thrilled to see that I could put a bookmark gadget right on the page. The favorites bookmarks that come with my internet browser, and I use Microsoft Internet Explorer, can get pretty jumbled up because I'm adding so many great websites to it. Well, iGoogle is perfect for having links to your top favorite websites right there at your fingertips. But after a while, I realized that I still need my Internet Explorer favorites. You just can't put everything on your iGoogle page, and you wouldn't want to. So the other day, I was going through my favorites and deleting some of the ones I no longer wanted or that were no longer, you know, valid links. I also renamed several because, you know, when you save a link, the name may not be very user-friendly. It just depends what the website designer of that particular site had decided on to name it. So you can go into your favorites and see some website names that are pretty hard to decipher in there. And you have to click on them and open up the website again to figure out what it was. Well, for those of you who haven't renamed the links in your favorites list before, it's really easy. In Internet Explorer, look at the upper left corner of the toolbar at the top of the page and click on that little yellow star that has a green plus sign with it. And this is where you add websites to your favorites list. But we're not going to add a website this time. We're going to go further down that menu and click on Organize Favorites, which will open the Organize Favorites window. Click to highlight the website that you want to rename that you see there in the window and click the Rename button at the bottom of the window. And this will highlight the website name in blue so that you can just start typing and it will replace the old name. Press the Enter key and you're done. Now when you go into Favorites, you're actually going to be able to find what you're looking for. And here's an extra tip. Why not type the name, such as City of Winthrop, and then put a dash and the surname of the family that you were researching at that site, which is why you bookmarked it in the first place. So in my case, um, for the city of Winthrop, I might type city of Winthrop dash Larson. This is a real help as you're looking through those websites. But over time, you may find that you are bookmarking a lot of websites. At that point, you may want to get a little more sophisticated in your organization of your favorites. And this can be done again from the Organize Favorites window. Now, in my case, I have websites on a variety of topics. So I created a folder called Genealogy in my favorites. Inside the Genealogy folder, I have folders named Libraries, Societies, Military Resources, Blogs. You know, you get the idea. Most importantly, you probably find many sites that pertain to a particular family that you're researching. In this case, try creating a folder called Surnames. And in that folder, create a folder for each major surname that you research. Now, my preference is to actually start out with two folders. One is for my family, and the other is for my husband's families. 
So within the Lisa's family folder, I have a folder for each major surname that I'm researching on my side of the family. So now when I find a great website about a town where my Sporowski relatives lived, I save it to the Sporowski favorites folder. Now this might seem a little bit elaborate, but over time I found a lot of websites. And with this method, I can almost always retrieve them really quickly. But even with all this organization, the file folders are stored by the computer in the order that you created them, and not in alphabetical order. Have you noticed that? It's a real nuisance. <laughs> well, here's a way to get them back in ship shape in alphabetical order quickly. So we're going to go back to our internet browser and click on the yellow star favorites button. This is the one without the green plus sign. And this will open up the window so that you can see the folders that are in your favorites list. Well, you're going to right click your mouse anywhere in that white space on that window, not on an actual folder name. And from that right click menu, select sort by name and boom, you're done. All your folders have jumped back into alphabetical order. So now with these trusty tips in hand, you can go hog wild and add websites to your favorites to your heart's content. Now before we get to the fun part, one more little item for you. Be sure and subscribe to the Genealogy Gems podcast newsletter. I have been loading up the October edition with lots of goodies that I just can't fit in the weekly podcast. And my favorite item so far is yet another way to use your iPod as a family history tool. Listen to episode 22, if you haven't already, where we cover the topic of using your iPod in your family history research in depth. And then make sure you're subscribed to the free newsletter because there are even more ways to make your iPod earn its keep. So go to www.genealogygems.tv and click on the newsletter button. There will be a link for you to send an email to subscribe. And there's also a link there for the May back issue. It was the very first issue of the newsletter, so you can see an example of it. Now... Are you ready to see how I spent my free time this last week? Well, go to genealogygems.tv and click the TV set in the upper right corner to go to the TV page. And there you're going to find at the top of the page a link to my newest genealogical video, The Socks to America. You heard me right. The Socks to America. This video is a documentary spoof a la Ken Burns, chronicling the immigration of the fictitious sockish people, a.k.a. sock puppets. I invite genealogists and historians alike to sit back and enjoy a chuckle at our favorite pastime. So have a wonderful, fun week this week. Hope to see you in Utah, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.